This week on the Movement Strength and Play podcast, we are talking about who to trust. And Timbo, I can think of two people that come straight off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> One is you. No, anyway, um, we'll get into that, into the meat of that in a second. And uh, you can set the tone in a minute as to why would we even have that as, as a topic of conversation for the podcast. Um, but before we get stuck into that, just tell them about the podcast sponsors and the special gift they have for you to come and join us. I'm absolutely buzzing for this podcast sponsor. We've had some great podcast sponsors on in the past, Jackie, and these guys, the Spartan Race Team, are joining the ranks um, of sp- very kindly sponsoring the podcast. And not only are they sponsoring the podcast, but they are giving away free spots at a Spartan race. We are going to be doing the Spartan uh, Midlands on the 16th and 17th of July. And Spartan have very kindly gifted us some free places. So you have an opportunity to come and do it with us. Um, what a what an opportunity to get out of your comfort zone. Come and do something. Or you might be a seasoned obstacle course racer and you're like, do you know what? We've, we've done this one before, right? Here's a little story. We did a tough yeah. one a few years ago and there's a couple of people that turned up at like proper pros at it. And there's a few people yeah. there that were like... <laughs> they were like European <laughs> champions. Can you remember? I yeah, forget, she was, I forget yeah. her name. She was like, oh yeah, no, I've done like 25,000 of these. Um, yeah. and, I'm, and actually, I'm doing your one and then I'm going off and like running like around about three million times tonight. Yeah. 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 So, but if you want an ex- uh, no, I was gonna say excuse, if you want a reason to kind of come and do something with a few other people, have a bit of a laugh, we've got a Spartan race for you. Set yourself a little challenge. One of the things that um, we t- when we first started doing calisthenics, it was like um, uh, strength training for the survival in the urban jungle was the 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 notion that you came up with, Tim, wasn't it? And it, but just this idea of like, can you be strong outside the gym? Like, let, like the challenge, the enjoyment. I'll I'll enjoy the running part of it as well, but the. Um, can you use your muscle-up skills, actually, or your pull-up skills, or your human flag things, or whatever else that you're learning with your calisthenics training, can you actually go and do that in... It's, it's, it's still not the real world, is it? Because there's some monkey bars where you're throwing a spear or whatever it is that you're doing on the obstacles uh, of the Spartan race. But it's a bit more like get from there, over there, through that thing, and like you've got to use your body um, a little bit more own natural rather than gripping uh, can you pass me the chalk for the uh, oh I don't like these rings I'm going to put some tape on them to help me with the grip so there's, there's none of that it's raw and uh, it's going to be it's going to be some good fun and we're going for that um, in that as you can imagine with the, with the true um, notion of the movement strength and play podcast there will be some fun along the way there are a level for everybody so there's a 5k there's a 10k there's a 21k which is like half a marathon um, the details will be in the show notes. The website is um, race.spartan.com. Um, but to get the three uh, free, not three, there's 50 free spots available. You've got to jump through a couple of little hoops because, you know, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to earn it. You've got to show, prove your worth. And that is, um, <laughs> you need to take, you need, you need to join on social media, on Instagram. You need to take a video or photo of you training or preparing for your Spartan race. You need to tag Spartan, so at Spartan. You need to use the hashtag Spartan Race. And then you also need to tag us, School of Calisthenics. And then very importantly, to make sure that we see it, send that to us, send that post, that video, that picture to us in a direct message, in a DM. And then we will um, uh, authorize the fact that you've passed all of those, uh, those criteria of the correct tags and whatnot. And then give you the code that you can then just go book on to the whichever race it is that you want to do on the Spartan website. Um, and that is how you bag your one of 50 free race places with me and Timbo. Be quick because they're going to go. I'm glad you're here, Jack, because you are, you are so much better than, than I am at conveying the details of these things. I, would have I read the email. I read the email. I read the email. I know, email. but you, you do it well. You do it well. <laughs> <laughs> um, right let's get into who you should trust this isn't a self-promotion this is just generally helping you to navigate the minefield of social media and working out who actually knows the hell what the hell they're doing <laughs> i thought i thought it was just a case of they had to pick between me or you <laughs> yeah probably yeah um who's got more credibility um well let's dive into it so sit back and enjoy us having a waffle about who you can trust <laughs> roll that jingle Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. 
So Timbo, the um, I want to just just set the scene of something of um, the conversation I had the other day, and this was just like a bit of a realization for me. And then actually, I've been seeing a cranial osteopath thanks to um, Cl- uh, Cole Clayton. He said I need to have someone work on my head. Um, it's been amazing, crazy, um, and. I then had the conversation with him and he's like this old guy that's like seen it all, right? And he's like Yoda and he just like messes with your head like this. I can trust him because he's like, he's got a white coat on. It's like... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mm. yeah. He's like, just the way he talks, you're like, this guy knows it. Anyway, anyway, so, um, and he was like, he he was laughing along with this notion that I had a conversation with, um, it was was Mrs. Jacko. I was having a conversation with the missus and she was, um, this is going to sound a bit too, she was talking about a conversation she had with her friend, but just stay with me. The, okay. But basically, they had some like pain in their ankle from running, right? And I said to her, I was like, you know where, with all these different people that we've listened to on the podcast and how how you start to appreciate the, what's causing the pain in that ankle? I was said to her, I was like, well, <laughs> I... I could, I said, to be fair, I was being a bit hard on myself. I was like, I could probably have a bit of a decent, like, have a look at her and have a bit of a decent guess at maybe some stuff that might be going on. I was like, but where I'm at with everything is, I'm like, there's so much that, you speak to Perry Nicholson, they tell it might be something wrong with the liver. Mm. Or you speak to it, oh, something wrong with the brain or her eyes or this or that. And I'm like, the more, just the fact that I've, just the more I've delved into all this stuff, I'm like, it could be anything. Could be anything. Don't know where, don't know where and, to start. And and then and then that, I and then so then I go. I don't know anything. <laughs> and and we're not saying that we don't. But there's. But I quite like that openness of just being like, like I I'd, I'd prefer to feel like that than be like, oh, I know everything and I know the answer to this. Because actually, that's one thing I'd probably say um, as a, as a as a starting point of if someone thinks that they know it all, I wouldn't trust them. Because you can't. There was a great you're like this. Great you like an Einstein quote. Mm. Great Einstein quote I heard the other day. Um, what did it say? It said, the universe is under no obligation to reveal its secrets to us. Um, Good. I don't know. Strong. If, is, that, is that relevant? Is it relevant to the conversation? I like the quote. We can. Well, <laughs> it's we can all, you know what I mean? Let's shoehorn it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree. Me- meaning so, basically that like, no, we can't know everything. Is basically what that was that that sprung to mind for with. Well, uh, I've I, during I don't know when I read it now a while ago. Adam Grant's Think Again. If someone tells me what books to read, I tell them to read Think Again because it, it the the subtitle to that is um, the power of knowing what we do not know. And to start with knowing what you don't know and being comfortable with that, you need to be comfortable with being wrong. So it's kind of like this idea of just like questioning everything, taking a scientist mindset, and that's what scientists would generally do is they're open to kind of testing a hypothesis to see what happens and where what we have in the current kind of let's say the fitness landscape is a lack of scientists now some people and i'm going to pitch this as a spectrum because i think there's an important range of how we can kind of think about where someone is that we can trust on this spectrum so physiotherapy you've got lots of people at the moment i'm going to take physios because they're quite vocal around exercise prescription and it's evidence-based you cannot do that unless it's in the literature and that means it can't be just 12 people from a crap university somewhere that like <laughs> did this thing. It's got to be a certain population size with a well-designed methodology and the results have got to be pretty like nailed on. So don't do anything less in literature. On the other side, you've got old like <laughs> whoever. I was going to be like, I was going to be like, careful, choose your words here. Do you know what happened then? There was a load of names of people that I think of running through my mind. I didn't want to say any of them because I didn't want to call them out and get in trouble with people. So let's call it John Smith because there's, <laughs> we're going to keep it steady. Who's well good at whatever it is that you want to do individually, but has got no real kind of like experience or expertise other than what he's done himself. Now, those people are good teachers, right, to some people, but they are so for those people that aren't into academia research, and this is, I'm not massive in statistics, but N refers to a sample or population size. So N of a thousand is like 1000 people showed these results and therefore we can have some confidence because it was a big sample size. N equals one is means that works for you and nobody else, basically. So if you find that you've got, and, and social media is, a, is an absolute minefield for this. If there's loads of people who are really good at what they do in their own practice, 
who then assume that that gives them the authority and credibility to tell other people that that's what they should do. And for me, that only, that brings a level of credibility because you learn through experiences that you can share with other people. For sure, that's part of it. Yeah. But there has to be, there's a central point, I think, where you are not completely bound by the evidence. And that's kind of the art and science of training and coaching. Yeah. And, but you've also, through your experiences, taken what you've learned from a practice perspective, but also from a principles perspective, let's call it. And you've gone and tried that out on other people than just yourself or maybe a few people. But you've actually gone and tested your, your hypothesis. And that's where you get people that are experienced coaches like who've been in the game for a long time. Like you've had time to go out and try things and see them through, see the results, learn a little bit more, try something a bit different. And I just think that, that, that we have to, just because someone can put together a nice reel and they've got a big following, I've got a big bugbear about this at the moment, that like social media does, social media following does not determine credibility. Like in terms of actual, like it's, it, that's not the game. Instagram algorithm is not going, you're a really credible source. So I'm going to promote your content to the people. It's going to be like, your reel has got the right number of right music on it. It's got this, 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 and this, and, and certain people engage with it. So it's like, I think it's becoming really difficult to seek out people who you can actually trust. And I'm not talking about calisthenics, like talk about nutrition, talk okay, about okay. whatever. But like, I just, yeah, sorry, I've, oh, I feel like yeah, no, I've just no. offloaded some I've, stuff there. No, it's good. I've got, um, I've got something for you in that area of the, the sort of evidence-based literature stuff as well, just to, for, to, so, to also consider. Um, and, or two things. One very small one is like, if all you ever do is evidence-based stuff, like you're never going to find out anything new. <laughs> so you're about five you years behind. <laughs> yeah you've got to do some there's got to be like well maybe you're not the person that needs to be doing the new stuff but someone somewhere has got to be something that isn't evidence-based to like find out whether something new is going to be better than yeah. what we used to do everything um, that we do now was once an idea that somebody thought i'm going to try this and yeah. it caught on yeah. and then so yeah. then an academic somewhere went let's count some beans and see yeah. what happens if we actually try and understand like, what's going on i've got a third thing actually and it's more it's more to do with like um i think meditation is a great example of this so monks have been meditating for x number of thousand years now that we've managed to scan their brains and show that it's actually worth doing then people say that we should do it and it's like but why did we need to have that because the monk said that it was good to do and he's benefited from it for thousands and because this is something around like that you have stuff you can trust if it's been there forever you can probably trust it because stuff that you can't trust, like, you know, if it's not the truth, it, it dwindles out. So stuff that's been around for a long time is, is one thing. Um, but back to my, back the, the main point I want to make around the, the, the sort of evidence-based or research stuff. Um, and a good example of this, I think, is um, Patrick McKeown from the Oxford Vantage. I've been on the podcast a couple of times. He's who taught me um, the, to become a breathing coach myself. His... You're going to share a bed with him soon, aren't you? It's very close. <laughs> I'm parking my camper van, Patrick, on your front lawn. He gave me permission. Outside his window. He gave me permission. He said I can park on his front lawn. I'm assuming he's got quite a big pan. That's a um, different story. Anyway, that's a different story. I have to do. A, I'll have to do a debrief podcast of like my trip I'm to Ireland. Buzz it. That August. is going to be. That'll be the podcast of the year. Keep your eyes on my stories. <laughs> Around the 25th of August. The um, absolute fanboy. Anyway, we're digressing. We're, this is. Um, that's a total in joke. No offline chat. At all I know. What we're talking I know. About I know. Yeah. Carry on. Basically, I'm going to visit Patrick in Ireland as part of an event in August. Anyway, Never meet your so, heroes, Jacko. That's what they say. You know, I'm no, scared for you. I know. I know. I'm scared for him meeting me. I am um, too. He, he, you're, <laughs> you're, you might be his hero. <laughs> right. So, but what he's right. What what he's done is gone and looked at the 20 years of research that researchers scientists that people have been doing on breathing and a lot within the sporting realm and then taken all of their conclusions all their things that they say work and then formulated a framework and exercises that fit all of that research and then gone simplified it in a way that you can coach it there you go there's the thing it's it's not if which is very different to me going um i've developed this mouthpiece or I've developed this training protocol and I've also paid for a research study to be done on it to prove that it works. 
And then you should now, this is evidence-based. It's like, yeah, but it's, it's biased because you bloody did the thing. It's um, like a big Gatorade scandal in that, wasn't there? They were like <laughs> yeah. paying for research. It happens to turn out that isotonic sports drinks are good. Who would have thought it? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, but there's so much people, we do need to, um, you did this in the, the other podcast. Like we do, um, speaking to people out there, like we need, and this is to all of us, like, and including myself in this, we need to open our eyes to what is what is actually like fair and what is what is what is real what is what is truth and not and you need we need to look someone me saying uh this is based on science like that just that's just a phrase i've said like is it actually and then what was the actual thing done and now most i, I appreciate everyone listening bar probably like 0.1 percent are going to be like yeah but i ain't got time i'm not going to sit down on google scholar and start reading uh, research papers but it's it's just to have that appreciation that we do have to question or at least look at if you're interested rather than just following stuff blindly of going well if this if we're, if we're having that evidence-based question like who funded the study no one does research for free someone has to fund it and 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 it's worth knowing if it was about breakfast cereals if it was nestle then you got to take it with a a pinch of salt or probably a pinch of sugar. But there are some people that are wise <laughs> to this this game as well, and they'll often quote a research paper. And I can find a research paper to prove any point I want to make. It's like it's <laughs> yeah. called bias, right? <laughs> so often what research people will do is they'll go and search all the literature, ignore the papers which don't agree with them to find the paper which does agree with them. And then they'll put a paper in, in the Journal of um, Finnish hands and elbow science or whatever it is, like some kind of relatively obscure journal. I don't even know if that one exists. Um, <laughs> and it will be one of those things of like a sample of 20 people. But it, because it's a oh, in research has shown that just because it's a published article, there's this there's a massive kind of spectrum of like um, of, of quality of research and of, of publication rankings, in fact. Yeah. Um, so I just think, and and that is like, oh, okay, well, it's in the research. It depends. Like, not all research is equal. And and this, I appreciate that you're sat there going, well, who do I trust? And I'm going, that is exactly yeah. the point. Ask that question. Because if you go into social media world or whoever and just go, is this person credible? Should I be trusting them? Because what we're doing by investing our attention in people and giving them potentially financial, um, or that we're paying them for, for services or support, is we are we need to be careful that those people are going to be able to give us the right support from a level of expertise because if you're buying a training program from somebody who has never programmed for anybody before apart from themselves like that's that to me is something i should be going okay well are you the right person for me and maybe you are if you're an absolute beginner or you're doing a certain thing and this is outside of calisense right let's just not kind of pigeonhole it in I, I would just like to kind of like say to people do your research um, around these sorts of things. Find out what they've done before um, because there's so much stuff out there. And yes, it might take a little bit of work, And but please don't pick based on social media following. And we've got yeah. a relatively big social media following. Uh, that, But that's not... Um, there's people with bigger social media followings and there's also really good people who've got less social media followings than we have. Yeah. Um, I'm asking people to just do a little bit of diligence in a very tricky space of knowing who has actually got the quali qualifications experience uh and right mo uh, what's the right word best intentions let's say yeah yeah i've so, so uh, i'm just going to point yeah. everyone towards no, no, what no. we're doing is i try to be one of those people <laughs> ross yeah. edgley is yeah. one of those people friend of the school yeah. of calisthenics like yeah well based well, in both practice and research yeah and we've had loads of loads of amazing guests on the podcast that tick tick those boxes yeah. i think some of, like uh, for me, I think of um, just a sort of final take home for me would be if I was trying to simplify it. I'm thinking about like how long has that person been doing what they're doing? So how how long has it stayed about for? Um, what experience and it goes in hand in hand with that. But you're talking about, like what experience has is, is, is that person or that organisation uh, got in terms of who has it actually been working for and what sort of results are they generating um, from that? And then my third one is like if. To, is it like joined up with other people's thinking that you already trust so it might be in a different area or different something different but you're like okay that's new but actually their 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 principles are aligned with these other people over here that i do trust and do think that their their work is good and and that for me if they're ticking those three boxes it's like a 
<laughs> it's let's get them on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you said before as well, like it's also you don't necessarily always have to be an expert in the thing yourself. Like you, I think you said to me before, Alex Ferguson was not an amazing footballer, but he's a hell of a football club manager. Like, yeah. Um, so well, I that's know. the irony. I was gonna the example I was gonna say actually was around I mean, football managers make me. It always gets me. It's like right, um, multi billion pound business. Um, Right, you've got no experience whatsoever other than you played football. You've got no experience of being like you've never been a manager before. Um, why don't you be it? Because you were the best player. Yeah, yeah. Martin <laughs> Johnson did that for England. Didn't last that but long. No, 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 in no other like business world would you just get give someone the top job with them having zero experience of it yeah, at all. Because they were quite uh, good at it. Yeah. Anyway, I hope that's not come across to rant. It wasn't supposed to be, but I just look out um, onto the... Onto we like the your rants, the Tim, anyway. We like oh, your I don't rants. know. But yeah, these rants, are things that go on in my mind. Do you know the other thing? Just a close that goes on in my mind today. I was going to put this on Instagram, but I didn't. Um, what is it? And this is completely unrelated to who to trust. Apart from maybe it's about threat perception. Um, what do you think about this, right? <clears throat> what is it about the human um, behavioral system, social behavior, where it is impossible to walk side by side down the street with somebody that you don't know. So if you accidentally kind of come out of a shop and somebody's like at the same at like level with you, there's then this kind of like strange game of, of either do I speed up or slow down, but I'm not staying at the same pace. I'm thinking like, of like two magnets. Like if you put it's two exactly North like North that. Together, it's like, it's like they can't, they can't. can't stick together. But one meter in front or behind is okay. Like that's, that's safe. Is. So I'm like, is my brain kind of going, we don't know this person. We can't possibly be all like what, but I just thought that's quite that interesting sort of social dynamic. It happened to me today and uh, I put my foot down. I'm like, I'm getting in front of you, but I don't know whether she was also going to put the gas on and we were then going to be in a more, race, more complicated having situation. A, like, <laughs> racing, having a walking race down the street. I get my hip waddle on and all of a sudden I think I'm going to the Olympics. <laughs> I wonder whether when someone's side, side by you and you're not talking to them, so you're not turning your head and you probably can't, actually see them in your peripheral that well that 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 is that threat threat perception being like because you don't know them is it like i need to have them in my vision or i either need to be far enough ahead of them that they're not a problem or or the only back, time that we ever them. like yeah or we only ever well because if i go forwards they're behind me so that threat perception you would think would yeah. be like worse is it that we only ever kind of walk closer to people in a social situation so if we don't know them we feel like we should talk but we don't want to because we don't know them so we just like avoid it it happened to me today and i just thought i was, I was thinking about it and i thought this is just a, an interesting thing of, of human behavior sure. that i found quite entertaining oh. Yeah, so I'll round up the podcast with that little little thought for people. Well, how do you know who to trust? Not somebody who's walking the same pace as you. <laughs> like either you need to speed up or slow down because we can't carry on like this. Not working. <laughs> Next time that happens to somebody, people are going to think of me and they're going to laugh because yeah. they'll be like, "This is this weird thing of like, do I slow down or do I speed up?" I'm typically going to go and go faster. I don't like to walk slowly. So if you, hey, if you come up, if you don't know me and you find yourself walking alongside when you come to Spartan. You better slow down because I'm going to race you. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to throw the curveball in there and say, like, say hello to him. That's the curveball. Well, yes, I mean that's that is. If you want to make that situation more awkward, that is definitely <laughs> one thing you could try. So smile, smile at them. Do you know what's? Do you know what, like the? I did a little experiment. Um, you know, a, ma a mate of mine used to do an experiment um, when uh, when we were in sixth form. He was like he'd been keeping a log. I think more mentally that whenever he went to the toilet, the urinals and the men's, he'd always have a little look either side of him. And, and he came up with a theory. Where's this going? Like, Where's, where is this going? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm coming back. Don't worry, I'm coming back. Around the size, he reckoned he could make a judgment because he'd seen, he'd had a sneaky look at that many people's weenus. Um, he could, by their body language, the way someone <laughs> would hold themselves whilst pissing in the urinal, he could... He could make a judgment on that, whether they had a small, medium, or large uh, <laughs> schlong. Anyway, What's a social so, experiment? That's not in a journal, that, was, that one, is it? That That's was, not been published. <laughs> that was, no, it, N, N was quite large on that. But, um, well, literally. So or... <laughs> my, social, my social experiment the other day was around... Um, it was when I was out on a big run, and I was like... Um, I was smiling at everyone, trying to, like, get, trying to make eye contact with them and smile at them. And do you know what every single person did? Ignored you. Smiled. No, of course they did. People love but a smile. Did. Yeah, but they, and you can't. It's it's almost like you can't. You can't not reciprocate it. I mean, I had like. But, it, 
I had a guy. It was actually it was when it was when I it's when I did Snowden twice actually, and I'd come down. There's this guy looking. <laughs> I love I love, I love April. And it's when I did Snowden twice. Not just you could have just said I didn't know it was Snowden, but you had to get in there twice then, didn't you? But that you would, big dick. I know, but that, but that would have been, <laughs> that, would have been a lie. <laughs> that would have been, that would have, that would have been a lie because I did it twice. Anyway, I'd, I remember I was reminding me because as, as we're coming into Clamberis, but the by the. The train track where everyone takes a bleeding train off. It's like, what are you doing? Anyway, he was sat on bench and it looked like he was getting ready to go to work and he was like rolling a fag and he looked super miserable and I, and I didn't think I was going to get him. But like, I, I just, I, I said, I said, hey, yeah. And, it, and he looked up and I smiled and I thought he was just going to give me like dagger eyes. But he smiled back. He smiled back. It's true. Good it idea. happens. There you go. Well, think of the people that you might meet if you just if you started intentionally. What you should, what people could do is actually start intentionally walking the same pace as people and say <laughs> hello and see what happens. You might meet some interesting people. I reckon some people will be it'll be fifty fifty. So if you come and join us um, for the Spartan <laughs> race, you're probably going to get in a running and a walking race with Tim, and then you'll probably get a nice smile for, and a hello potentially from me. Give me one back. Yeah, I'll be running in front for about 3K <laughs> and then you'll probably overtake me because I'll be <laughs> hanging. Uh, I right, run very, we, very slowly. We were going to try and keep this one short. We have big that time. was what, my favourite part of the podcast. Yeah, we, we always save the best bit for the end. Um, we get the important, well, the, I don't, yeah, the meat out of the way and then we, we can freestyle the end. Right, um, do that thing that Jacko said about Pog, about Spartan. and Yeah, come join us. Yeah, he told you spaces. all things. 50 spaces, be quick. Tag Spartan, at Spartan. Use hashtag Spartan race. And then send it tag to us in a DM. Us and send it to tag us. us. We're School of Calisthenics, if you didn't know. And make yourself look well Spartan when you're doing the speedos it. speedos on. If you want, not compulsory, please. Um, that, there's some things my eyes can't unsee. Um, right, until next week, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength and play. Class dismissed. <laughs> Thank you.